see that. Ooh, and we have 90 people watching us online. Hello, 90 people. 67 of which are in the United States. One of them is probably my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge now. Can we continue with three zero meters, zero five five, please? Thank you. There's a whip of some type. Zoom there, Daryl. That was excellent spotting. Yeah. I'm too far Baby away. Baby crinoid. I'm not able to ID that anyway. It's past crinoid, so that's fine. Right. Oh, there it is, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Probably more like decapitated crinoid regrowing. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. please. Oh, this is a cool little feature right here. Hey, there's that rock again. <laughs> what problem? Aloha, Kauai. Uh, <laughs> could be. Could, uh, if not, I think some of the rocks up here there, might be loose. Those look kind of tiny, though, aren't they? You want me to reach over and take care of that, then? Sure. I like tiny rocks. They're so cute. But I thought that oh, made them less likely a to have a... Ooh. There's oh. a thing. Slime star. Slime star! All right, when we're seeing a slime star this early into okay. the dive, it's going to be a good dive. They can go wet. Uh, what rock were you looking at? Uh, I mean, I think it's a little bit more out of frame, bottom left, but really any of these things that are, you know, 10 centimeters or greater in diameter um, would work. I think right. I may have been talking about that one, but looking at it from this angle, it looks like not as good a cannon as I thought it was. Just, I think it's cemented. Ooh, 229 people are watching us on YouTube right now. So cool. Hello, Oregon. Welcome. And to all of our first time viewers, Welcome in. We just started Back on call. Dive. The big rock. Look wow. at that. Too big again. Oh. Really? <laughs> okay. What about the one just to its right? So let's keep going. Amber can just be disappointed at me. <laughs> and a sea cucumber. Where? On the rock to the right. Do a quick zoom on the sea cucumber before we come around this one. And a little coral in the background, too. He looks like okay. so Go dark. Uh, make some tracks here. Onward and upward. Uh, Onward and upward. Oh. 
swimming sea cucumber in the Atlanta view, playing oh, with the tether. There it is. Yep. Okay, how's that? Unmute yourself, mute yourself though before you do that. Mute yourself. <coughs> Push in there, there. Out, but when you, it makes a loud clicking noise when you do that. Oh, okay. Ooh. Coral. <laughs> Push in just a little bit more for it. That's good. Thanks. This looks most likely, I would say, from know it, but we're pretty deep for from know it. I can um, go, uh, yeah, if you can push it a little, a little closer. More. So I think we have an audience listening down in the lounge. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in from the Nautilus. I'm going to need to find a toe here. Right there, I'll push in a bit more there for him. Roger. Yeah, let's just call it a from Noah for now. Okay. I have a little baby sea star on the vice too. Hey Brian, if you take a sea cucumber and you put it in vinegar, <laughs> does it become a sea pickle? <laughs> I've only tried to soak it in alcohol, never vinegar. <laughs> Technically, salt water is also a pickling agent. Yep, sure. So is it... Corley, are you trying to one-up Brian now? So is it <laughs> is it already a sea pickle? No, I mean, I like, no, it's got to be in vinegar. Pretty good, that's pretty good logic to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come up five there until I get back out ahead of you. Copy that. Whoever sent in that joke, okay. touche. Do you want me to turn it off for now? You got it. See that sponge. Hello, like New Mexico. Hello, Missouri. Yeah. Missouri, thank you for your uh, your sympathy about the oatmeal raisin cookies. Lots of swimming sea cucumbers down here. They're little guys too. They're just little. bamboo how's that uh, no i think that is Great. crinoid with hydroids oh thank you and camatula crinoid as well hmm. so far we're two for two for crinoids with regrowing their heads good for them and several baby sea cucumbers way to bounce back from you know being decapitated <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves a comeback story. <laughs> it's definitely reaching that point in the cruise. <laughs> comeback story? No, just the witty responses of uh, <laughs> of what we're seeing. You okay to keep it moving, Dan? Okay, you're you're muted. Let me get another 10 meters out. Okay. Pretty steep. Sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. I can Is get it going to be a pokey one? Uh, Atlanta's right there at 20 meters from the uh, 
It's nice to drop in on the steep part. This is yeah. a really pretty, pretty pink pretty color. Seems well, pretty steep here. When we're picking the dives, we generally particularly avoid that. We don't want to scare the pilots. Oh, it's boring to drop in on the flat. That's good. Cool That's good feedback. Thank you. Because we intentionally been planning dives, dropping in on the flat spot. I know, but. What about that rock? Look at all those rocks. Mm. Look at all those rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so many rocks. Is it huge? Yeah. It's huge. No bigger than the rock we brought back last night. No, I didn't mean that Good one. Lord. I did oh not mean that one. <laughs> Dan, Dan, do you see that? That, Can however, it looks just about perfect. Yeah, I was going to say. Roger. I love the Telestrator. Ed McNichol, if you're listening at home, thank you for the Telestrator. <laughs> okay, Ren. Grab yourself a rock. Oh, boy. It's all you. We have a legit question. How excited would you be if a merman or mermaid would be sitting down there in the sand right now? Legit question. I don't know what I would that think. One, uh, Honestly, right I don't know how I would react. I would Copy assume that. that someone slipped something in my beverage. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would have to call TJ up. Okay, I'm since he's the them. merman for his birthday. Oh, Roger. I feel like I. Uh, what's I, your group I really don't know. That? I feel like I'd be like, is this, there's there a group person down there? <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. It kind of reminds me of the old wooden ships where they would have like mermaids and designs on the front of the ship. Yeah, where the, like the bowsprit up at the front. Yeah. The, yeah. We, we need we need we need a TJ to be at the front of our, this <laughs> the Nautilus. <laughs> We need to go back to land, so then that way we can finish our bow sprite of TJ as a merman for the front of Hercules. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, legit question. Uh, uh, Coralie, the one closer to us. These rocks oh. have a rough slash bumpy texture. Does that mean anything to you about this area? Yeah. Ha ha ha. Oh, if only, if only you knew. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm about to say. Your yaw to the left, so you're. Um, if you look in that camera, you're kicked out that way. <laughs> bring the yaw. <laughs> no, not the ass, but the yaw. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. Um, oh, you got it. I'll shut up. Yeah, the texture that. So the rocks we're looking at is called ferromanganese crust. It is a type of hydrogenetic rock, which means it's formed out of the seawater and onto the hard substrate here on the seamount, which is generally basaltic rock, but it can also form on top of carbonate or mud type crumbly. sediments. Oh, oh, crumbly. Real crumbly. So this is one of those cases <laughs> where it did that. <laughs> um, can we look at the broken side first? Sure. But Just, uh, rotate your wrist right there a little. So if you can, can zoom see. in there, Daryl. Yeah. Oh yeah. So what does that tell you? The arm there. It's salted. Roger. So that's going to be a carbonate, not a basalt. Well. Zoom in a little more, Daryl. Yeah. Can you zoom in more? This is really weird. Whoa. That's not what I was expecting. What no. is that? It. Uh, it on. Where's Amber? Yeah, Amber, help. Amber, help. I. This might be just super weathered basalt. Where's Adam? Someone tell me. Someone who looks up basalt more. All right, we'll, we'll take it though. Yeah. Yeah, we want weird. that. That's weird. It's just the, those <laughs> right little there. dots in there kind of look like vesicles that have like secondary mineralization, which we've been seeing in the basaltic rock. But the fact that it's so crumbly okay. and this weathered. Uh, is your jaw frozen? I'm just holding it till they tell me where they want it. Oh. We'll put it in the starboard box. Yeah, put yeah, it in the starboard, small box. starboard. Yeah. Copy. Uh, could you switch cameras for me? So do you have your uh, your jaw frozen? Or just make sure you have the fingers closed when you... Uh What's that sample number, Data? Uh, sample uh, one is it, one if it's seven. green, is it frozen? 117. Yeah, roger, roger. Thank 
Yeah. Okay, it's frozen. Anyways, the texture on the outside Probably of the, the, sample of the, the, the uh, on the ferromanganese the crust is bubble cam. Botryoidal. Whoa. I uh, still think that's the name of our uh, of our shift, the Botryoidals. Um, and pretty much what the Botryoidal tex texture signifies to us is that it's very recently been growing. So ferromanganese crust can grow over millions of years. It takes millions of years for it to accumulate. Um, sometimes you'll get these really smooth surfaces and that kind of can be... Dan, can we change from the Niskins to the BioBox? Oh yeah, sorry. Or that can signal that um, there hasn't yeah. been a lot of recent crust growth, but the fact that there's botryoidal texture signals that there is recent crust growth. So we have something, I don't know how to pronounce this. Or is that a misspelling? Let me push that out a little more and put it in one of the small boxes back there. Does science have a preference where it goes? Nope. Nope. Wide open. Copy. Dealer's choice. Oh, okay. It's saying it's looking. Yeah. Oh, like losing. I know. I was like, what kind of scientific word is that? <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> So the reason we've been laughing so much about this last question was I've been running a game where I'm trying to see how many times in a watch I can make Corley say, um, boy, Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever wrote the question is thank you, and, and on that one, thank you for the help. <laughs> Kick your uh, yaw to the... Yeah. Someone online is saying, if done. we saw a mermaid, the geologist would be mad because the biologists you. are stealing the spotlight again. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how you would though. We'd need a doctor. Swing her on around to the left there. Very good. You can see the bubble cam there in front of you. Got Hi. another really pretty pink color or pink orange. Uh, that's you moving the ROV. Oh, jeez. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's called driving the ROV with the manipulator. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for uh, sending us humor in the deep sea. <laughs> You ready for blue off? What's that? You ready for blue off? Uh, swing it to the right a little more. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Yeah, somewhere in there. Copy. Okay. Blue's coming off. Right. And it's disabled. Roger. Nice job. So apparently my mom was <laughs> watching us. Uh -huh. um, or watching the stream and she heard she says i heard that you've not read brave new world which greatly surprised me like what <laughs> you know i don't read <laughs> oh that's so sweet that your mom's watching that's my takeaway <laughs> <laughs> so corley i think this comment is for you this must be like one of your friends oh my god <laughs> no my friends don't watch the live stream <laughs> Yeah, people ask me if my wife watches, and, and or people ask my wife if she's watching. She's like, no, I don't watch him at work. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> also, most of my friends are sleeping now, so. What am I looking for? Yeah. Uh, PC3. My wife's too busy solo parenting two dogs and a child and working full time while I'm out here. Is it she doesn't easier have time to watch. or harder since there's not a fourth person she has to watch after then? Harder. <laughs> Yeah, she wouldn't have time I'm, to watch. I'm a, I'm a net positive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Corley, another question for you. Um, last or a couple of nights ago, you took a Are chunk of carbonate with ferro manganese crust. Could uh, be. What did it look like when you got it up? Were there any surprises? Uh, um, get a little closer, and then uh, Daryl can push in. 
To be honest, I don't remember doing that. Uh, okay, I do. It was like Go ahead. brown or oxidized. It was oxidized. Oh. Yeah, I was actually looking for that sample. I was down in the wet lab today. Cause Which I, one? That sample that was like, do you remember when it was like really like rusted color? And I'm like, why are just these two rocks like rusted? Oh, do you yeah. remember what sample? You don't know what sample number that was, right? Was it 73? Uh, but it was one that broke into, right. it broke in half. We're good, thanks. So there's okay. two pieces. Was it 73 or no? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay, because if it was 73, three, free, 73, um, um, trying to get a really good. close look it at that It actually was really different, yeah, and it wasn't uh -huh. carbonate yeah, inside. There, oh, we'll wait, you know what it I'm was. I'm thinking of the right one. It honestly, like, it didn't really look like ferromanganese crust either. It might have just been, like, very oxidized basalt. But maybe I'm thinking, I'm looking at the, I might have been looking at the wrong one. And I might be getting them mixed up. Because I was looking at a bunch of different rocks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All the rocks blur together after yeah, a certain point. definitely. Brian, what kind of uh, little stringy things were those swinging down? I don't know. Are you full I think they were some kind of spongy thing, but uh, they were right. kind of too small for us to get a good look at. Come back, screen. <laughs> that worked beautifully. Thank you, screen. Okay. You can uh, zoom in there. Hmm. I thought we'd be uh, low enough to get Ooh. a profile, but I'll come a little closer. Yeah, I still don't know. Let's take a sample. Uh, push right in there. Why are you vibrating? Type of black coral? No, no, definitely not a black. It's an ox no. coral of some type, but I'm really struggling. So I would like to definitely take a branch or two of this so we can look at it under the microscope. And snip and slurp. Uh, if it can get in the two in the jar this time, sure. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to get the jar set up on Copy. jar seven? And I'm not sure, I think, can we look at the polychaete here that's hiding in the sh in the flock? The one behind it? Yep, there it goes. Oh, oh it's gonna oh. swim. He was listening Are to you. Full zoom there, was listening to you. That's now full zoom. Okay, well, that's fine. That's incredible that you were able to spot that little creature. I don't know why the camera's shaking like that, it's so strange. I'll log it. Oh, uh, it's my, I think it's that vertical thruster. And Corley, uh, that viewer said it was a sample in the 100 sys, not 73. Oh, okay. Then I'm just the way we landed. Yeah. Oh. Hold on for dear life, little polykeet. Zoom out just a bit for me. Good, thanks. Oh, whoops. Yes. Yes, indeed. Be kind of a blind uh, snip here. So I'm pr I think that polychaete we just saw is in the genus Swimmer, which I've always just enjoyed the name for a swimming polychaete for someone to make the name the genera Swimmer. <laughs> uh, 
ball four will go in there. Could give it a go here, see what happens. You wanna go uh go seventy five percent there? Copy. T four is at seventy five. Roger. All four went in. Hey, in the door. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Okay, you can turn suction off and go back to flush jar, please. So Copy interestingly, that. we found the one last night all the way in the flush jar. <laughs> yeah, we're theorizing it. Like if the jars aren't quite lined up, it gets caught. Uh, All right, what was that sample number, please? That was 118. All right. Are you full wide there, Darrell? So we are just outside the monument um, for this dive. So the closer we've been to the monument, we're literally like, I don't know, three miles or something from the boundary of the monument. The south side of this geo is included inside the boundaries of the monument, and the north side is outside. Um, so either tomorrow's dive or the following dive will probably be inside the monument boundaries. Do we have different sampling protocols when we sample inside the monument? We do. It won't change. It won't change much. Uh, actually, it may not change at all, frankly, from the the amounts we have been sampling. But we do have extra limitations um, based on the permits from the monument um, that we will all have to review Push in before there, the next dive if it's or the, ne the dive in the monument. Generally, if it's similar to the um same one. Yep. Last year, the permits we got okay, last year. Okay, can go away, thanks. We're limited on the amount of rocks. Yeah, we're limited. We we're take. limited on the number of everything we take. And then um, it's like if you see, bi like any biology, you have to see like a, a certain couple. number yep. of them before but you. But I believe take that number changed this year from last year. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Dwight was saying it's something like 20, 20 rocks per sample or 20 rocks per dive. Yeah, oh, that's the, a lot. the sample yeah, numbers are quite, quite high. We've got, we're like, that's why I say I don't think it's really going to change. Right? Yeah, please. Um, I don't think what we have been doing, I believe, is fully within the permit yeah. already. Um, but we do have to double check that as a note to myself to go reread the permit. So this looks like the same thing we've seen three times here now that I'm still having trouble placing what it is, but this one just has a couple of associates. Uh, zoom in there, Daryl. I'll make it a better zoom. A little closer to the sky. There you These go, Paul. These look a little daintier. I think this is some type of chrysogorgid. Really? Yeah. Look at that kind of gold-colored skeleton. There's definitely no nodes. It's got dainty little polyps. We're kind of deep for primnoids. Maybe um, iris down just a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say some type of chrysogorgid for this one, and that might actually be different than what we just collected. But um, all right, this is good for now. Okay, go in. Before we go too far, can we look at that one too? Oh yeah, like maybe get a little closer here, it's further away than I thought. So being at 2,500 meters, we might be getting into some of the deeper coral um, groups here that we haven't been seeing much. Um, this area is almost completely unsampled um, below this depth. And so a couple of our dives between now and the end of the cruise hopefully will be between 3,000 and 2,500 meters because uh, only two of the 32 dives in this area have gone below um, okay. 20, where we are now at 2,500 meters. And I think they're both Nautilus cruise dives. I think you're correct, yep. 
So what are some of the deep water sp um, corals that we could be seeing that we haven't seen before? They're generally the same um, families. Just different genuses? Just different, uh, different genera and certainly different species. Yep, that's the same thing. Push right in, close in. Yeah. All right, and yeah, that's the same one. Thanks. But there's one. There, I think there's a predatory tuna kit um, in the same. Without taking off, if you want to just zoom wide and pan right. Okay. Go ahead. And there. Oh yeah. I can zoom in on that guy. Wow, that's a. Uh, yep. That's a big tu tunicate. Yep, that's all. A uh, little over ten centimeter predatory tunicate. Jeez, that's that would cool. make the largest tunicate we've seen all expedition. Probably up there. That is a big one. You want to go pull zoom there while we're or not pull zoom, but a little tighter shot. I can get it lined up. Hold wow. it. Wow. And it doesn't have any of the little dots that we're not. No, sure this is of. the other. The other, the other morphology species. we've been seeing. All right, that, thank you. Okay, go ahead. Ooh, that looks like a pretty sunset in the background. It's funny, they're all up there on the little uh, Ledge. There's another guy there on the lasers. Zoom in there real quick for us. Oh, yeah, I missed that one totally. Yep, same one, though. Good eye. I missed that one. These okay, are really hard in. spot. They blend in with the sand. Oh, the, little, the little wispy bryzoa that we got from yesterday's dive. Not on our watch, but on the watch before us. That was two days ago. But I have a really hard time remembering which one's which. Had all those little wispy bryzoans that were almost impossible to see unless you zoomed in. And once you zoomed in, they were everywhere. So what's the difference between a bryzoa and a coral? The internal structure is wildly different. It's um, one of those kind of convergent evolution things where they've grown a similar filter feeding structure, but Ready? if you actually look yes, at them, they're please. not even Nidarians. They're a totally different. They're a totally different. Bridge, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can we move three zero meters, zero five five, please? Thank you. So a bryzoa has no stinging cells, no nematocysts like a Nidarian does. I believe that's correct. All these overhanging ledges are really interesting to look at. I do. Push in easy there while I come closer. A brittle star, an ophioroid. Uh, that's probably good because we're not going to get a good look at a central disc from this angle, so that's good enough. Right. Is that how you identify the different brittle stars looking at the central disc? It's super help. Yeah, uh, I mean, sometimes shape and size of the arms can kind of help, but um, but not a lot of the other time. For the most part, you do need to get a good on square on shot of the central disc. Look, it's a Herc parking zone. So, Corley, a question for you. How did these ledges form? Um, uh, well, if it's basalt, um, these look like sheets. They could push in there, though. So, so like sheet, sheet flow. Okay. That's what you would call it. So, the sheet flow would start coming down. Is that a... What is that? Crinoid. Crinoid. Yep, feather star. 
All right, thank you. Okay. So to make these ledges, the sheet lava would flow down, cool, and then another level or another layer of sheet lava would come on top of that. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of makes these cool little ledges. Yeah, some like weathering or something. Does it take a long time for the weathering erosion of basalt compared to like other types of rocks? Depends what you count as a Wasn't long time. <laughs> like a long time on human scales or like a long time on geologic uh, scales? Compared to other rock types. Um, I think, I mean, I think weathering and water kind of, I don't know, for That's sure. That's I don't know for sure, but I would assume yeah. it's generally about, it kind of depends how much iron you have also. So it's really only going to happen, you're only going to get this like, I don't know. Let me think. I for also forgot what the question was. I actually just started answering a different question. <laughs> so. Um, so with these little cool, cool feature, rocks and ledges we go. that you said probably came from sheetrock and weathering and erosion. Yeah, okay. Oh. I w for some reason I was thinking about like the rust or like the oxidation that was happening. I got really confused. I just started answering a different question. When you get old, it happens to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in case people didn't know, I'm about to head into my late 20s at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep it going? Yeah, I think so. Bridge now. Same step, please. 30055. Thank you. <laughs> I love the negative negativity. Okay, so has climate change meaningfully right a impacted this part of the deep sea world here. yet? I think you're near the end of the line. Do you want me to come down? Yep. I, oh. I feel I like you get a different version of this question every night. Yeah. Yeah, I think for the most part, we really don't have a good enough baseline to tell you what the effects are, at least on the corals and sponges. Um, and these, these areas have never been documented before, um, this seamount specifically. Um, and most of all but one of the dives we have done or every feature we have visited with the exception of one, it was the first time anyone has ever run a camera over it. Um, so measuring the change in any kind of um, quantifiable way, really we can't do out here. Um, we are starting to see things changing in terms of current flows, uh, water chemistry, stuff like that is definitely being documented to start to change. So yeah, the changes are occurring, how long it takes for them to affect the life uh, at these depths, it's hard to say because we don't have a good baseline. Um, but we definitely, in shallower depths where we have longer time series, absolutely, it's a it's a very real effect, and I suspect it's affecting down here as well. We just don't have the data to prove it. Awesome, thank you. Push in there for a minute, there. I think shrimp, but I'm not convinced yet. Push in a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yep, shrimp. Oh, shrimp. Pneumatocarcinus shrimp. Thank you. Okay, I can go ahead.
lack of feeding traces and fecal piles and all the things I expect to see out in the sand on all of these dives surprises me. Like we're seeing a fair number of uh, holotharians here, but we're really not seeing a lot of their traces of their life in the sand, which is surprising to me. There's a coral there, two keys. A lot of sediment in the water. Maybe they're just getting covered up as they go. That's totally 100% possible. Okay, I did notice that push this there, but coming down through the water column, it did feel like there was more marine snow at this site than there has been other places. Push and more, we're seeing push. so many uh, holotherians, especially the pelagic ones, up in the water um, that I, I'm, I'm intrigued. Same thing. All right, thanks. Okay. All right. Bridge now. Same step, three zero zero five five. Thank you. So we've been seeing several uh, sea cucumbers floating through the waters. Are those, and typically the ones that we see are so big, are those just a different species that are a lot tinier, or are those possibly the same ones, or a new species? Uh, they're definitely not the same species as what we're seeing. Um, down on the on the seafloor, I think we've been seeing this species several times, and I. Um, but these are just maybe the juveniles. I think these are just littler, but I also wouldn't swear to it because we haven't gotten a really good look at them. But I'm operating an assumption that the clear swimmy one that we've got imaged very well a few times this expedition already, and it's pretty common here. I think they're the same thing what we're seeing up the little ones we're seeing up on the water column right now yeah it just looks there are just so many little ones i also am pretty sure i saw um a, pla a plagiothuria uh in the water column or two actually on the way down but they were what come and that? gone so quickly that i didn't get that? a what is what that long thing can you back up for a second dan uh yeah I can just a half meter come up a bit first so i don't blow it out What were you looking at? This, but maybe it's nothing. It just looked weird on this still cam. It looked like another... Beach well rostrum? Yep. Yep. That would have been right, so neat. That's just a rock. All right. Uh, yeah, it's too bendy. It's got too much of a curve there, I think. Mm. All right, can we look at the sponge uh, just to tilt up a little bit? Maybe a little bit more. Somewhere I promise there's a sponge. There it is. Push in on that one. All right, that's great. Thanks. Okay. They're sort of like, there, yeah. so it makes it look like them. They're kind of hovering, right? Yeah, but it looks like that top limb is like sticking out. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Oh, but maybe not. The side view is a little different from the still cam. Oh, that reminds me. Why is this so blown out on the still cam? Uh, this is from previous watch. This is Chris' picture of an unknown coral. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out the picture. <laughs> That's what? Uh, yeah, it's been a little tough adjusting things. Oh, why does that appear way darker then? Anyway. Bam, boom. <laughs> so will this thing keep growing upwards? Anyone can answer because our coral experts not listening. I'm gonna say yes. 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 Possibly. Okay. <laughs> Perfect answer. Yeah. The coral expert was busy. The answer is yes. Yes. You want me to log in here? Here. What's the search term for it? to that. Here, replay, review. How do you look at it bigger? Yes, I need to hurry up. Please. Zipping. Roger, zipping. I've got ten minutes, ten meters left on this move, so <coughs> I will tentatively put in another move if you're gonna zip. Bridge nav. We can add three zero meters to zero five five. Here's the picture here. Oh, is that one? Zoomed in. Oh, is this the same one? Yeah.
Ew. There's a little zoanthids on there. Okay. So what's all the flocculent stuff? Is that uh, bacterial matter? What is all that? No, I don't know what it is, but probably not bacterial matter. There's nothing to it's fluffy to grow on, right? Yeah, right. Schmutz, sea schmutz. Hmm. There's all kinds of crud in the water here. Yeah. Not all me. <laughs> <laughs> and for all of our folks tuning in, we are currently exploring the western flank of Gio 13. We are currently at about 2353 meters. For more information on our internship program, um, check out nautiluslive.org. We do have viewers that are curious about our internship program. Can we elaborate on that? Yep. Sure. Sure. We have uh, five internship tracks on Nautilus. Uh, we have internships in ocean science, in seafloor mapping, navigation, video engineering, and ROV engineering. And the internships are open to uh, community college, undergraduate, and graduate students, and recent students. So. Okay. Um, we're really looking for folks who, um, you know, not, not, necessar bleh, not necessarily have taken um, a ton of courses or maybe who haven't had their Norella. first time at sea yet. Yeah, this is still um, And are interested in a truly hands on and immersive internship opportunity. Um, on Nautilus, you become part of the expedition team as soon as you're on board. So you're sitting a watch in the control van, you're working on the vehicles, you're maintaining camera systems, you're processing samples. Um, you're, you're immediately part of the team and paired with uh, senior team members as mentors. So um, those internships are all available um, on our website at Nautilus Live. I, they should be open in a couple of months, uh, but maybe we can hear from our ocean science intern on board right yes. now. Paula. Yeah, of course. So, Yes. What's the question, Annie, for the science internship? Yeah. So, so what's a, what's Just say been, more about what's your it. experience yeah. been like? Like, what do you do? Can you elaborate on that, please? Yeah, of course. So, the science internship is very uh, diverse, I would say. So, you not only get to learn about all these new coral species, sponges, and even geological okay. formations. You're also part of the frontier of exploration, so you get to be with the team of scientists as they as they make their discoveries, and nice also cup, outside of the control van, you also yeah. get to be cool. part so of the sample processing. So everything you see on camera, what what we sample, you actually get to see those yeah. in person while we process them and then send them to museums, and that's a very exciting part of the internship. And yes. I think. And what is uh, it, the number? Like 75% survive the internship? <laughs> or <laughs> oh, no, it's 100%. <laughs> yeah, everyone survives. <laughs> Time is up here. We, uh, our ship moves ending, but right. we'll let you I get a look. Zip. I'm zipping again. We'll, we'll let the ship move run out, so if you want to look around, we can. We're trying to find a very hard to see little white coral. <laughs> so if you see one of those. Stick like or what? Uh, um, like a little like bush. Little bush. It looks a lot like the Norella that we've been seeing. So what's unique about this coral that we're not able to quite put in a specific category? Um, Brian was saying that they thought it could be a type of Chrysogorgia, Chrysogorgid, um, because of like how small and dainty the polyps are. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't quite look like a primnoid, but yeah. we think it may be Calyptrophora, which is a different 
genus from Norella, but it's still in the family Primnoidae. Okay. So TBD, we've collected a sample. I'm gonna get another, and um, when we get those samples back on shore, we'll have um, the experts take a look and maybe do some DNA analysis, and we'll be able to say for sure. Awesome. All right, I gotta get going. Samantha, when are the internship announcements coming out, roughly? It's a good question. Is Megan's not there, right? Uh, it should be in a few months. It's usually a couple of months before our season ends. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, usually the fall. Yeah, I think this season around October, I want to say, November. You know what? I bet the website even says. Let me pull it so up. I know the deadline was December 31st. Yeah, that sounds... The website does not say <laughs> yes. <submit> <laughs> <Megan>. <laughs> It'll probably be <laughs> September or October. If people want to sign up for the newsletter, they'll be the first to know. Great tips. Thanks. Thank you. For all of our folks on um, online, uh, sign up um, with our newsletter. You'll be the first to know. I think we're looking at about, what, what did they say? Um, October? September, October. September, yeah. October. So check out nautiluslive.org um, for more information. Stay tuned. Yeah, it will also open up applications for uh, contractor roles, both junior and senior contractor oh, roles on okay. the ship. So if you're um, already, you know, in a science or engineering track and um, have had a little bit of experience at sea, we're also looking to fill those roles every year. So those also open up in the fall. Awesome. Thank you so much. And... Uh, if you want to explore the different roles on the ship on the Nautilus Live website on the team page, um, you can see who's on board right now and you can also explore the different career tracks and see um, some kind of general ideas of, of pathways that people take to get here. Everyone's different, but um, the, the career pages dive into the different responsibilities and skill sets that um, members of the team in those roles have and then also um, some links to some of the profiles of some folks to get an idea of the different uh, possibilities to get into the roles on the ship. And thank you. Chat, stay tuned. Um, check out nautiluslive.org or sign up um, for our newsletter. Oh, we have a question about the sample. Um, speaking of the manganese crust, did that quote unquote would end up being a sponge stock. I didn't actually get to see it yet. Oh, okay. Paula, what did what it was it? I it was recorded as a sponge stock. Sponge oh, stock. Okay. Ooh. <coughs> well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yes. And it looked you know kind of gone either way. It did look like wood though. It did. But not after we saw all the other things that looked just like it. Yeah <laughs> well <laughs> Happen sometimes. <laughs> it still looked more woody than the other wood like objects that were sponges. So, this gale has like a submarine landslide feature. Um, is there a reason for that? Has a. <coughs> Sorry, say that again? Has uh, a what? Landslide feature. Yeah. Sub yeah, so. These uh, volcanoes, as they grow, they <coughs> become gravitationally unstable, meaning they're just like a pile that is too high. Right. And, uh, you know, the islands of Samoa and the Hawaiian Islands, all of them have major landslides <coughs> that kind of, in many ways, form the shape of the older islands. Oh. Um, Interesting feature, feature there on Atlantis sonar, but yeah. 80, me 80 meters away. Can't get there from here. There's a bigger chryso that's new to this dive, though. A 
bit there, Daryl. Is it me or does that Chrysoborgia not look all that happy? I think it's a different species. Okay. This is a much thinner, thinner branching, um, sparser one, but I think that's the nature of this species. And are all those little things hanging on to them like copepods? Uh, squat or lobsters. What is it? Squat lobsters. Oh, cool. Europe type is squat lobsters. Or crisis dilate. Crisis, yeah. All right, that's probably good, thanks. Okay. Another little baby sea cucumber. Wanna keep it going, Dan? Yes, please. Bridge now. Can we have another three zero meters zero five five, please? Thank you. So this might be a question for Chris or Brian. How many samples can Hercules hold? Well, it depends on how big the samples are, <laughs> for the most part. And how different they are. But, and, and what they are, yeah. But we've got Put six there, yeah. Niskin bottles for water samples. There's five push core samples, seven slurp jars, and there's four, five, six, seven, eight bio boxes, which can fit multiple samples in if necessary. So a lot, a lot. Quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> you can fit a All lot right, I there. think that's good. Thanks. Thank you. And we can, and you know, right. we can double right. up sometimes a rock, a rock with a coral and things like that that can easily be tell, told, told that we can easily tell apart. Um, we used to double up on rocks. Yeah, some people get brave. <laughs> a biologist eyes, all the angular cantaloupe sized rocks look alike to me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to zoom on him? Right? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Daryl. Oh, I oh. see the call. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great, great call. <laughs> <laughs> This actually looks like it might be a baby of Ritacorgia. Aww. Push in a bit more. So we've got an Ophiocanthid um, brittle star, and yeah, I would say a juvenile, not very awesome looking Ritacorgia. <laughs> it's just a baby. Yeah, but its stalk looks damaged. Oh. I think it's damaged. All right, thank you. Okay. Go on, thanks. That brittle star is. That brittle star is also damaged. Yeah, yeah. Somebody has been gnawing away there. <coughs> Looks like I got some catching up to do, huh? Mm. So Brian, in your opinion, what is the most successful predator in the deep seas? Over 2,000 meters. Well, define successful. I'm just reading a question on. I, I know. I, I, I just. I mean, like that's that's the crux of the question. Yeah. Um, I it mean, could be a bacteria. If you are if you are a crinoid predator. And you have I lots of crying uh, heads to bite off. Um, Scooter to hold position. Now, really successful. It? Way behind. Bridge now. Um, Can we hold position? Yeah, here, I don't. Really, I'm Thank having you. trouble even like trying to answer that question because the definition the of parameters success. Parameters of that are way too wide. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're thinking about big, scary, you know, large predators like 
Sperm Giant whales get down this deep. Uh, beaked whales get down this deep. Potentially, oh, there are large squids blob. lurking around here. There are six gilled sharks lurking. So there are a few like big classic apex predators kind of down here. Um, but I would think, um, but successful is probably some snail that just is really good at you know finding its food and its food's pretty common. It's probably the most Quick successful there, predator. Darryl. This looks like some bioturbation over here. These white patches look like they've been ex excavated out of the sand. Those little holes are probably something living in the sand. This is what I was oh. uh, commenting on earlier that I was surprised we okay, hadn't seen it more of. Very silty. Really blocky. Yeah. Can we look at that if we've got a second? Sure. You're gonna push in a bit there for us. That's the thing we have already sampled. Thank you. That is a big brittle star trying to live on a relatively yeah. small current. <laughs> okay, he can go away. Got maybe a wall coming up there. So what is the uh, procedure for when you find Pushing a new there, living or new species? Oh, same thing. Mm. Okay. I'm sorry, Kitty, would you repeat no, that? No, 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 you're good, you're good. Uh, what is the procedure for when you find a new species? Uh, go away right there. There isn't, there isn't one. Uh, the short answer is it, it depends on every one. So um, the work to describe a new species is intense. Uh, and so there are a lot of things out here that we refer to as undescribed species um, that we kind of recognize, we, we know roughly what it is, um, but we don't really have a name. So we still kind of refer to it as a new or undescribed species. And then there are those times we find something that no one knows what it is. Um, but it really takes such a level of expertise to describe uh, a new species that even if we find something that we know we're very sure is a new species, the odds are none of us are going to describe it anytime soon, to be frank. Um, there's such a backlog of things we know are likely new, but we either don't have enough specimens of it to really describe it, or we lack a good enough imagery of it or something. So there's a huge amount number. Okay, we're good, thanks. Um, okay. Of these Don't organisms worry. that are undescribed um, out here that don't have a species name specifically. Um, it's really quite hard. There's actually a, um, a colleague of mine at NOAA um, I'm gonna come underneath did a really there. interesting project of Copy using um, video from, I believe, Nautilus and Okeanos at Puerto Rico to describe a new uh, genus of Tinafore based on imagery alone, which is basically unheard of. Um, you almost always have to have many specimens, physical specimens of the same one, and the fact that we were able to get across both ships um, good enough imagery of this one type of Tinafore in the Caribbean to get all the way through peer review with the designation of a new genus was kind of a huge step forward in terms of being able to use all digital data sets. Um, but that is definitely not the norm. Awesome, thank you so much. Like another example is if, if there's this, we call it a ghost octopus or a Casper octopus that was first documented in 2015 in the Hawaiian Islands and has now been seen 
I don't know, eight or ten times um, across the Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may be, it, it's certainly a new species, maybe a new genus, and could even be justifiably a new family. Um, but we can't catch one. And so we all kind of know what this is. We all loosely call it a ghost octopus. Um, but because they're impossible to catch, uh, I don't know how long it'll be before we actually get around to someone doing the taxonomy to describing it. And they, they really do need a, basically a, uh, a specimen to dissect in order to figure out where to place it in the um, octopi family tree. Is there any way that you could do like an eDNA sample? Again, we wouldn't really, the hard part with, we need a really good voucher specimen to know what we're looking at to be able to detect eDNA. You know, we mm -hmm. could be four or five different um, octopuses in the area that are all showing up in the eDNA and we wouldn't be able to tell one individual from another. So we need to know the codes on one or, you know, on a specific one to then look for matching sequences floating around in the, um, the water in general. But no, trying to, uh, eDNA really wouldn't help us in, in describing a new species. Other than to say, here's some code we don't recognize, but we've frankly sequenced so few things in the deep sea that there's always lots of code we don't recognize floating around. So I know this one is a, a little bit outside your wheel, wheelhouse, but then that new whale species that was discovered in the Gulf of Mexico, that was essentially identified with just two whale bones, wasn't it? like a, a skull and I think they said another one washed up a couple of years later and that's how they were able to identify it as a new species. Yeah, I read that paper, but I don't remember any of the details of it. Certainly not enough to comment on it without going and finding the paper again. No, 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 it was just interesting about how they were able to assert the claim of a new species based on two bones. Yep, and the paleontologists do that all the time from the fossil record. Okay. So that's not uncommon in the paleontology world. Yeah, they they work with, you know, much few, few, far fewer number of specimens, and and you know they can they'll sometimes um, claim new species with not even you know full skeletons and inferring what the missing bones look like. Uh, So we're just beginning to, the watch change the control room, passing over to the age 12 watch. It's just starting to come in the control room, so we'll probably start hanging out here for just a minute while we pass down. I'll probably be sticking with you a few more minutes because I think Adam's uh, doing a live interaction right now. So this has been a pretty pretty slow dive so far. We're not seeing high densities of corals or, or really too much. No, but what we have seen has been different. Mm -hmm. So we, we may be kind of crossing into that lower depth range kind of set of communities. So do you think as we slowly start ascending our way up, we'll start finding some more biomass? It, more would, cool it wouldn't surprise me, but we're, we're getting pretty good at knowing where the corals won't be. <laughs> we're not getting pretty good. We're not very good at knowing where the corals will be yet. We know that they need hard grounds. We know they like ridges and things they can get out into the current on, like boulders. Um, so, you know, flat, sandy sediments are going to yield very few corals, but we, we can find plenty of ridgebacks with good flow that have exposed rocks that still have no corals. And so there's definitely, we don't have, like, there's definitely parts of the habitat preference of these organisms that we really uh, don't understand yet. Front rows, change it out. Aye. Thanks, Brent. Thank you. Well, it looks like Adam's interaction's done. Yeah. Hmm. 
right, so four to eight shift is going to be signing off here. Eight to 12, coming on up. Why, hello there. Chris, what is blue? I don't know. I'm sorry, you've been sitting here toggling it on and off. We're sitting still right now. Where are we going? I can't hear you, Good evening, chat. We are on watch change. A four to eight signing out, eight to 12 signing in. Hope you guys are have a, having a good evening or day from wherever you're tuning in. <laughs> Thanks for exploring with us. Okay, hello, eight to 12. Looks like science is still getting settled. There's a jelly. Jelly. There it is. There it goes. Is there that the goes. jelly? Is it the jelly? I'm going to send them off into space here and put back it up. Mm. There it goes. Mm -hmm. He's gone. Is that the backup noise? Yeah, it was a backup noise. <laughs> Adam is taller today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Wait, okay. He's trying to settle in. Let's go. And he says, let's go. Let's do it.
can probably do a move if you'd like. Let's do it. Bridge nav. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to prepare. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you didn't see the Good visuals. evening, Fabio. <laughs> Let's do three zero meters, zero five five. Just scrolls through some questions. Oh. oh. Correct, three zero meters, zero five five. That's what I thought too. <laughs> Okay, so we're just pretty steadily heading uh, upslope here. As we head to waypoint two, we're uh, interesting. I'll save that part for Adam to explain. Um, but yeah, essentially for our watch, we'll just be heading upslope. Um, making tracks. Making tracks, yeah, to about... Uh, oh, a slope. We're not going to be able to, to meet meters. our... Uh, distance metrics today. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering waypoint two is, hold on, waypoint two is 1,358 meters away from us. I don't think we're making oh, we'll any metrics. There. We'll okay. get there. We'll get there. Well, Adam, do you want to, uh, we, we just put in a ship move, uh, just on the same heading and bearing that uh, the last watch was on. So we're uh, getting underway now. Perfect. But if you want to give us an overview of what we're doing today, that would be great. Uh, yeah, so can you zoom out the high pack so they have I'd love to do that. Thanks for asking. So we are headed up Oop, the, too far. Uh, a pretty steep-ish slope. This looks like kind of a landslide area, right? So we'll probably see a lot of kind of debris on the, on the slope as we go up until we get to a part where we'll probably see a nice vertical wall and then when we get on top there is kind of a secondary ledge um, that that could we, we're interpreting as possibly kind of a paleo shoreline deposit so that it was at level uh, that orange level the light orange level and getting eroded and then sunk down to the dark orange level to finish getting eroded and we have us going along the base of that wall because because of you know the limitations we have of ship motion but it would be cool to like zip over that thing to the other little hole to the north if we feel like the ship is capable of doing that at that time but that'll that'll be tomorrow up here yeah. Cool. It's a pretty good plan. <coughs> Do we have any particular critters we're looking for? So at this depth, we haven't seen, uh, you know, anything that we see down here is potentially of interest. I think so far they've seen a lot of stuff that we've seen before, some Chrysogorgia and stuff like that. So we'll just be on the lookout for anything biological. It should be fewer and farther between down here because whatever we find could be of interest. Some interesting bioturbation here mm -hmm. to the left of the lasers. Yeah, it's like little feeding tracks. Maybe we'll find a holothurian nearby. One can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> So as we get started up the slope, do we want to just keep keep the ship moving? Yeah, okay. they'll be, s so they picked up a rock on the first watch, but uh, it kind of crumbled in their hands. So it wasn't Ooh. really uh, kind of a solid basalt. So we'll keep our eyes open for what looks like a good place to sample a rock. But uh, I've kind of, I'll try and time it with the end of a ship move. But we just keep them coming, I suppose. Sounds good. We're doing 30 meter steps, so easy okay. to stop. Bridge now. We can add three zero meters to zero five five. 
And Jules, do you have a, a biology intro for this dive, you, what you heard from Brian? Yeah, so Brian said they've been seeing some interesting corals. They look sort of like primnoids, but have polyps that are more like um, chrysogorgids. So oh. they have sampled one. Um, I'd love to get a closer look at one. I haven't seen this either. Um, oh, and they did get it in the slurp, a successful snip yeah, of the slurp. Yeah, yeah. So we are looking for more bamboo coral samples because we don't have too many. Um, what else? Yeah, that's, that's oh, all I've got, really. there may be one really. of those coming up. Yeah, can we? Oh, it's not in the screen yet. <laughs> Just I'm already asking for zooms. Yeah, pre-zoom. Pre-zoom. Presume. Huh. Huh. Funny. What? Oh, there. Can we zoom on this one? <coughs> zoom in, Dave. What are we looking at? I'm not really sure. Definitely a black I coral. think this is what he was talking about. I don't know if it's a black coral. But the skeleton looks so black. Yeah, it does. Don't, don't, uh, don't tell me that's not an indicator. Oh my god. It doesn't necessarily. Oh no. <laughs> what? This is a black that's coral. That's what I thought. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> They let you Can get kind of close polyps? to feel like you know what you're yeah. talking about, then yeah. they change it up. <laughs> uh, it's still Kim. It's not changing. Um, is it possible to get any more zoomed in on the polyps? Can you zoom out, Dave. I think this is what Brian was talking about, actually. Well, I would good. love to have Brian here to confirm. I assume it was. The chat says possibly a primnoid. I mean, it looks a lot like a primnoid, and right. that's what I would say if Brian hadn't said anything to me. But <laughs> now I'm like, is it? I don't know if Brian's looking at his computer still, but. Can you zoom in, Dave? This camera's pushing to the I feel like this one is Norella. Huh. It's not a great angle. That's okay. I feel like I can see the polyps well enough from here. Can you? I guess you have a screen right in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, that's good. I think this one's Norella. Um, I think the ones he's talking about would have daintier polyps. Those look like primnoid polyps to me. They're dainty at the tip. Yeah. I'm going to call this Norella. OK. I'm going to second that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think I'm good. Okay, 8 to 12, we have our new viewers t tuning in. How about we start some introductions? Intros, intros? Yep. And but then um, this is a, I'm looking for a funny question. So follow-up question. What is it that you keep wanting to smell despite the fact that it doesn't smell particularly good? <laughs> <laughs> what? Annie looked up funny questions and I watched her do it. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> what? Not a new one. <laughs> How long for tonight? Let's start with the front row. <laughs> Good, because I need more time yeah. for that question. We're just going to say rocks anyway, so. <laughs> he licks those. Yeah. <laughs> 8 to 12, here we are. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll start. Uh, Samantha Wishak, Navigator um, for H12, also the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, which is the nonprofit that operates Nautilus. Um. <laughs> I guess I would have to say I really like, well, this, the, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people like the smell, but like petrichor, the smell after it starts to rain. Mm. Um, some people get really weirded out by it, but I really like it. Oh, what was the okay. question? It was, what do you keep smelling even though you don't what want What is to it you want to like, <laughs> smell despite the fact that it doesn't smell good? Yeah, I mean, petrichor sometimes oh. doesn't actually smell good when you think about it. Like, it smells like wet pavement or wet dirt. Oh, okay. But uh, I, I think it smells really nice. Why is nothing changing here? Hmm. Tough okay. question. I Robert. Got, I got an answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Robert Waters. I'm sitting in the Herc seat. Um, my answer is California sagebrush. Mm. Oh, I love sagebrush. Oh. But a lot of people can't stand that smell. Yeah, that's fair. But and it I can really get like kind of. I love it. It makes me think yeah. that I'm on the beach. Am I like doing a hike along the water? Yeah. It can get a little mm. oppressive after smelling it for a long time, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Mike Burns, uh, oh. piloting Atalanta. Uh, my say my. Smell that I enjoy <laughs> that you're not supposed to enjoy. Is that what we're talking yeah, about? That's yeah. it. Uh, it would probably be like a rotting vegetation. So. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah. spend enough time out at sea and get the smell of rotting vegetation. It's like, oh, there is land. Actually, true. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, wow, Especially when you, yeah, you come back to shore and you can smell it from like a couple miles away. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dave Robertson, uh, video engineer, currently zooming in on uh, a sponge. He lost interest. He <laughs> <laughs> lost interest going. in it. And I have no idea how to answer this question. <laughs> I've, I've got nothing. <laughs> Sorry. What? How about new video gear, Dave? Yeah, or like, VH, like, oh, that's like that's a good one. One. VHS tapes <laughs> rewinding. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I haven't thought about videotaping a long <laughs> time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am really, I just want you to know, Samantha, I'm being a very good person back here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to congratulate you for that. <laughs> All right, I'll kick off the back row. Okay. I, I'm Adam Sewell, I'm a, a professor at University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography. Uh, my research is in submarine volcanoes. Can we zoom, please? What are we, uh, uh, and are we in, Dave? Uh, I'm director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. Uh, watch lead for 8 to 12. And I think this is probably a bamboo. Bamboo whip, yeah. So my smell is sulfur. Yeah. Oh, why? Okay. And it doesn't smell that good, but I know when I Zoom smell in, it, I'm getting close to something that's volcanically active. Right. Uh, so I kind of like to smell it, even though it doesn't smell that good. Interesting. <laughs> Sulfur. Oh, I got another one. Can I do two? <laughs> sure. Awesome. There's a smell that came from the Olympia Brewery when I was a kid, I live right near it, and it, I think it's like barley or awesome. something. Keep going. Mash cooking. Mash cooking, yeah. yeah. It doesn't mash smell that cooking? good, but I like. Mash I kind of like it. Yeah. Mash cooking. It's kind of a, it's kind of hard to answer that question because it's like, like it's when you think of something it's that a doesn't. Safe space. <laughs> no, but it's like when you think of something that the question is like, what's something that smells bad that you wish smelled good? And I don't really mm. have a good answer for that because I don't like things that smell bad. Donuts. You know, I oh frogs. Ooh, frogs. frogs. Yeah, okay, okay. I <laughs> wish frogs smelled better. Yeah, what? I often think that when, when I'm smelling frogs. <laughs> 
frogs, I don't know. They probably, do you, I imagine they smell like earthy, but imagine if a frog smelled really good. Mm, like French vanilla. Like, you know how you can <laughs> smell when a skunk is in the area? Ooh, that's right. a smell that doesn't smell good that I kind of But like, what too. if it was a nice smell and you're like, oh, we must be near a frog. <laughs> don't you think that would be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> I think, all right, I think I'm on to something I here. Think we're so. ending the watch early. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually all going to go to sleep right now. That's I another bamboo. Is it? I don't Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm with you. Paula, Not tell so us Paula. about things that you like to smell that <laughs> don't smell good or something. I didn't like even that. introduce myself. Oh, you didn't? Go for it. No, oh, I just oh, sorry. Smell you just thing. You wed no, with that the was smell? my bad. I just led with the smell thing. Um, oh, can. Mm, hold on. There's something I want to zoom on right there. Yeah. Um, oh, it's Brittle Stars. Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Jules. I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. I'm a biologist. I'm on the science and data team on the Nautilus. And I already answered the small question. Let's go. <laughs> Another Norella. Well, this might be the one that. Uh, yeah, OK, this is Norella. I'm having some coral paranoia right now. <laughs> Okay, I'm good on this, thank you. Okay, oh hi everyone, my name is Paola Santiago. I am this expedition science intern and this was data logger. And as, yeah, I am from Puerto Rico and I am a marine biologist and work on coral restoration. And I guess, geez, it's a very hard question, Annie. <laughs> um, I think the closest thing to answer that question would be how coral smells when you are oh. transplanting them. Oh. They, every time I smell them, they smell so bad, but they give me this um, feeling that, oh, I'm home. This is what I do back home. That's interesting. But I don't like That's the smell. <laughs> so I, I, I really wish <laughs> they would smell better. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, hello everyone. My name is Annie Halleck. I am the This Watches uh, SCF Science Communication Fellow. I'm from Pango Pango, American Samoa. I am a local educator back home, um, teaching marine science and biology. And uh, I'm going to name two. I think the first one would be like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like when you're cooking them, they smell. I don't know. They smell weird. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, <laughs> I don't know. This one is a gasoline. Mm. Yeah, gasoline. It does smell good. Yeah. It's a peculiar smell. smell. Yeah. What about you, chat? Oh, we have chat tuning in. Okay. What are things that smell good sometimes toxic? Like, where, when, you, when you were a kid, do you smell markers? Like, Sharpie markers oh, and stuff? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Same. What about, like, those, like, lip glosses that are oh. flavored? And, like, <laughs> you, like, put it on and then you maybe eat a little bit of it? <laughs> or... Is that anyone or else? sometimes you take your sisters and you just take a bite out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were like cupcake flavored. They That's tasted true. really good. Okay, thank you so much, team. Um, well, everyone online, thanks for tuning in. Um, today is the last day um, to submit your comments and oh, your questions. Associates on a crinoid. Yeah, we got we some. Seen a lot of that. This one's uh, like astro schema. I'm free falling. This region has been nominated to become a national marine sanctuary. So today is the last day for questions and comments. Also check out nautiluslive.org for our amazing highlights. Um, we do have a question um, about rock samples. So what kind of studies are conducted on the rock samples? Are they directed to any particular study about the region? Yeah, so uh, some of the rock samples are or will be used to try and help reconstruct the geological history of the region and the Pacific Ocean Basin. So these seamounts are all in a line, which typically means that they're generated at a hot spot or a mantle plume. 
uh, that's coming up through the ocean crust. But the ages of these are not, you know, perfectly aligned with that kind of model. You'd expect them to get older and older as you move away from wherever the source is, and that's just not the case with these. Um, so there are people trying to understand where the source for these might be. There's three known hotspot or plumes that could be the source. There's another one that's been proposed that, that is new that might be part of it. <clears throat> and it might be that they're all combining to uh, to produce it. So by looking at the chemistry and of the rocks and the ages, we'll, we should hopefully be able to figure that out. Other folks will be looking at the <clears throat> iron manganese crust that cro coats these rocks. Right. This is a, a material that um, precipitates from seawater very slowly, like at a millimeter per million years. And sometimes wow. we see, uh, you know, 30 to 60 centimeters of this stuff. So that's 30 to 60 million years of precipitation. And in addition to um, that's great, thank you. This precipitating is more manganese and iron from seawater, it, it kind of uh, concentrates some of the rare metals that are dissolved in seawater, things like uh, cobalt and, and ytterbium and other metals that are not very common but are really important for kind of modern technologies, including right. building solar panels and, and electric car batteries. Uh, some people are wondering whether these metals might be a, a resource for for our green economy future because they're in pretty short supply on land. Um, probably not in this particular location. It'd be pretty hard to get enough of it here, but um, understanding where these crusts are, what are the ecosystems that <coughs> rely on them for their, for their home, it's all part of the kind of information gathering that would be needed to um, even think about trying to sustainably uh, kind of harvest some of those resources. Awesome, thank you so much for elaborating. Control van, this is Leela in the lounge. I have a message from Steve Oscovich about that unknown coral we've been seeing. Um, oh, he thinks that it's a primnoid, even though we thought that this wasn't really, uh, or that this might be too deep and that it looked a little not primnoidy. But um, he would like to have more material of that coral if we come across another one, um, even like a whole small fan, if possible, since we've been seeing a lot of it. Okay, so awesome. Yeah. Is it been have you been watching the video? Has it been the one we've been seeing that we've been thinking looks like Norella? I haven't been watching during your watch, but uh, Brian was describing the coral and I looked back at the pictures of it and sent a few of those to Steve. Can you send me a picture in the in the chat? The yeah, sure. Portal? He thinks it's Calyptrophora. Okay. Uh, not Norella. So I'll send a picture can you show just show you how you can see it in sea log? Can you, Thank you fax it up to the van? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna telecommunicate it. <laughs> <laughs> Telepresence, please. Zoom in, Dave. Oh, wow, that's an a cool star. star. Wow. Bridge now. Many of these stars are not as. Uh, we can do a three zero meter zero five five. Like conformal to the seafloor as I thought they'd be. You know, kind of draped on the seafloor. They're just kind of like yeah. they're stiffer. Well, they have all these like little legs yeah, underneath so them, right? Yeah, part of their leg. One thing that's curious, or that people still debate, is whether those landslides happen really quickly and catastrophically, or really slowly and the kind of there the most people think that they do happen slowly but when you look at the deposits you know it is kind of hard to imagine because around the flanks of the volcanoes you'll see these giant blocks that right. look like they fell down really fast but uh this you can kind of tell this is a landslide because ooh, that one might be it oh. nope norella uh, that does... What's that, though? So what? that's Anthemastis, the mushroom coral. But not on the rock? 
Oh. Yeah, sometimes they're not. That's interesting. It looks different from the ones we've been seeing. Um, I'm having a hard time distinguishing the Calyptrophora from Norella. I think this... <laughs> I stay zoomed on that for a second. I think... The Calyptrophora image that I have has more of a white skeleton. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, yeah, so let's call this Norella. Um, where did you get that one? Uh, from the same place, from the sea log, and then I, en I enhanced. Which one was it? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, go to page four. Uh, that top one there, unknown coral. Is that it? Mm, no, it's not the same image. Okay. Um, landslide. Yeah, I think we covered that. Okay, Did go that ahead, thank you. Did that answer that well enough? It is super flocky here. Yeah. Okay, ready for a move now that you're in front of Atalanta? Zoom. Zoom oh, and move. Oh, this might be <laughs> it. This might be it. Oh, okay, I'll wait. Stand by. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is another one right in front. So it says unknown coral on... Nope, that's Norella. Um, actually this could be... <laughs> no. The writing looks different <laughs> from the picture Adam Norella. has. I think it's Norella. Okay. Oh. What? Yeah, but the white skeleton. But also they said unknown on, um... Hold on. This one also says unknown. Oh, and that has a dark skeleton. Yeah. Well, so I really don't know what's going on here. You're going to have to make a call, Jules. This is where <laughs> it comes down to brass tacks here. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> we can. Uh, I wish no one ever actually, said anything about this coral. Uh, well, shoot. I'm going to call this one. <laughs> Calyptrophora. <gasps> she did it. I did it. I said it. Um, all right, then. Don't move. Not moving. And I think then we're going to... The one behind it, I'm more certain, is Calyptrophora, though. I don't know why. I just feel it. Behind more. it? There's one behind it. I see it in the still cam. Oh, it's over. Or the, uh, in front of it, I guess. Um, oh, yes, in front of it. Between the direction we're moving. this coral and you. So pan down, maybe you see it. Uh, this one? Oh, is that the one you're looking at? Yeah, I want this one. So oh, if, never you, mind. if you move forward. <laughs> pan, pan up, pan up. Don't listen to Adam. <laughs> pan up. Uh, I don't see that You're looking at one. that silly still oh. canvas like that. I mean, there is a coral like right here off the porch. <laughs> There's a but large that's one. It, that's this one. Yeah. <laughs> and the no. other one is down here. Okay. All right. Yep. Let's just sample that one. Which, Which one? one? Which one? <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> uh, We're doing a stress test for <laughs> Jules here. <laughs> Jules is, needs to do some breathing exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Not this one that's right in front of us. Well, let's might as well zoom on it just to see. Zoom in, Dave. Let's zoom. Ooh. So, I would also call that Calyptrophora. So, then let's get that one. That was easier. Let's get let's get a sample of this. All right. <sighs> <laughs> Heavy sigh. The weight of the world. I'm just thinking about the taxonomists who are like, that is not Calyptrophora in them. <laughs> but you know what? They're not sitting in that chair, so you know. Mm, wow. No, they're That's in the cold. peanut gallery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.
I wish everybody could see my guide so that you would know how hard it is to distinguish yeah. the two. <laughs> oh my god. Is it um, because of the polyps? They just look very similar. Right. right. I guess I'd have turned it on if I'm going to use it. Oh. It is on. Huh. Okay, you I'm got the kind of getting a feel for button, this. Button pressed? <laughs> Not this again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I a forgot button, about button. that. Forgot about that. A button button. Uh, you zoom in, Dave? It's pretty dinky, isn't it? You want to re out on a good force three. You want to reach out for the other one? Is that one easier? You were looking for the whole thing, right? Yep. So. Uh, okay, so like this is Norella. That's Glyptrophora. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I guess it looks a little more like. Norella no, like, tends to look a little more like regular or lopsided. I don't know if that's a rule I could really follow, but. What? Yeah, they do look similar. Really similar. Yeah, and like, so that's not the only form. Like, Calyptrophora is like Come on. all. This would be all sample of these one, are one, nine. Wow. one. Wow. Oh, one, and then nine. Nine. like all of Tough these are looks. Norella. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Perfect. Where's this living? Got a lot of options. Where do you, where you got a good grip on it? You want to go side? I, I got a reasonable hold on it. Yeah. Well, let's let's save the front ones for something uh, fancy. Something fancy. Let me know when you're ready for the uh, sample view. Yeah, go for it. Okay, sample view. Paula, what's the sample number? Yeah, 119. 119. Thank you. No problem. Ah. Oh. Need a better button button. <laughs> <laughs> what All right, draw out. If you had another one to enable the button oh, button. Oh, we need. Could be a button button button. <laughs> yeah. We need to kill that thruster. So C is occupied, A, B, or D. Are they floaties? Nope. I should have asked that before. No, it's a rock. It's a rock. It's okay. a rock. Okay. Sorry, one more time. C, D, what? A, B, or D. A, B, or D. We'll be stingy and put it in B. Maybe. Can you push it out some more? Uh, assemble drawer command L. Oh, that's it. Is that max? That's maxed. I think you, that's good, yeah. Let's there it is. go there. Swish. Thanks for coming All with right. us, Coral. We're coming back in. Well, speaking of samples, chat is wondering about the two sponges Going we sampled yesterday. Yep. Yeah. They're wondering about the two samples we collected yesterday. A sponge? Yeah, what yeah about the two them? sponge samples. Yeah. Paula, how did they look? The sponges. The sponges, sponges? I was not there when they processed them, but I look at the final log are and they are alive, they are well, and oh, stored. Good. Excellent. Yep. There you go, Chan. Maybe live not alive. Well and stored. No. They what? Not alive, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not alive. Sorry about just that. The, just stored. Safely. 
work. I was very excited that they were stored, <laughs> so we got carried away. It's not alive. Yeah, so that last, I guess you have it too, right? What's it say? Oh, no, I have launch and recover on mine. Oh, the far right one? The RV, bluish one? RV cams. Is that is that the same as mine? Thing? It's, it's the same. It's not RV cams. Okay. It's, so if it's I hit dive, can you hit that? Hit the blue Maybe, one? Yeah. Yeah, it's the blue one. No go. So it's only over here. Well, well, darn. Okay. We tested that this afternoon and everything. Onward. Yeah. Onward. Mr. Burns. Sir. I got a message today from the Glassboro, New Jersey Chamber of Commerce saying that you had a statement you'd like to make about <laughs> the quality of the town. <laughs> Are you ready I, uh, to make that statement? I watch what you say on the internet. <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> Glassboro is a wonderful place. That's what they said you'd say. <laughs> Bridge now. RV ready to go? I'm ready. Is it guard? Atalanta or? RV ready to go? Atalanta's coming up, yep. Uh, let's do a three zero meter zero five five. Do you ever get any any heat for being Mr. Burns, like from The Simpsons? Sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> it's probably for the best. <laughs> Okay, move uh, is 13. Look at all this crud coming down. Yeah. Wow. What's going on there? Blocking oh, us. Are we in the are we in the current that's just kind of pushing right. stuff down? Wow. Here? Look at that. Let's see. That's nuts. Which way are we headed? It is coming down slope. And we're headed kind of wow. northeast. And that's the direction the current should be coming from is from the northeast. Our friends online are wondering, how can we follow up on the research conducted from this expedition as it develops? Mm. Um, That's a good question. I mean, part of it is that the research is going to go on for years from oh, the samples wow. collected here. So right. That, but uh, I don't know. Does <coughs> Nautilus, is, Nautilus Live is kind of the port to all this stuff, but right. we, they yeah. don't. We they do put out announcements when research is completed, but not like along the way. Yeah, kind of correct. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it. Like it takes months to years for species to be described. Um, it takes months to years for Sorry. samples, other samples to be processed. Um, so we do post when oh. there are. Is that jelly. that special oh, uh, jelly? Is it? Sure looks like it. D.